The purpose of this short presentation is to present how we are currently teaching dental light curing of photocurable restorative materials at the University of Iowa College of Dentistry. We have traditionally spent a great deal of time and attention teaching appropriate dental adhesive placement technique and the placement, handling, and sculpting of resin composite. However, we have given very little attention to the light curing step. We simply stated, cure for 40 seconds. This is based upon the assumption that our curing lights had enough light output, now referred to as irradiance, to properly cure or solidify the resin composite in the 40 seconds. Later, as more powerful curing lights were introduced on the market, the proper amount of time to cure became less clear, and we questioned if we were delivering enough energy to properly cure the resin composite, or we were delivering this energy too quickly. In a beginning step in the right direction, manufacturers began to stamp a time requirement on their composites based upon their commercial light curing units uh, given a radiance. Additionally, we know that the composite type and shade has effect on the required energy, as does the distance of the light curing tip from the surface of the restorative material, as well as the light curing unit's tip beam homogeneity, and, and many other factors as well. A new paradigm in teaching proper light curing is to deliver the energy required or deliver the proper amount of photons required by the restorative material you're using. This takes into consideration both time and irradiance of the light curing unit. Manufacturers have even stamped a energy requirement on their materials in some instances. We teach these concepts currently using the Mark Patient Simulator, which was developed at Dalhousie University and is licensed and commercially available through Blue Light Analytics. This simulator has a laboratory-grade spectrometer with one sensor in the anterior portion of the mouth and one in the posterior, with the detectors one millimeter and four millimeters respectively from the surface. If one knows the energy requirements of the photocurable restorative material, then they can determine how long they must apply their particular clearing light from at least two different distances to deliver the energy. This is analogous to filling up the tank of your automobile. The students have an exercise where they assess their own individual light curing unit using uh, the mark from the using both of these sensors. The uh, mark can give the maximum irradiance upon the delivery, the mean irradiance over the time that was, uh, that was applied, and also if inputted a energy requirement, the time needed to apply that light from that distance to deliver that particular energy. So they do this from one and four millimeters or from the anterior and the post posterior uh, sensor. Interestingly, you can see the vast difference in the handheld radiometer they were previously uh, using in this exercise. This is the bottom half of the page, and you can see where the students record their light curing unit, the, the particular one from their cubicle. And then we have a chart of the energy requirements of the resin-based composites that we currently teach with in the, in the clinic. We use the manufacturer's directions based on increment thicknesses and, and time required uh, with their curing light irradiance to determine the energy requirement of each of those particular composites, in some cases each particular shade or opacity within a composite. And then they can calculate the time required from one millimeter and from four millimeter distances and use their good, good judgment and understanding to modify these times at uh, even greater distances that can occur clinically. So concluding questions would be how much energy are you delivering with your particular light curing unit and how much energy do the resin composites you use really need? For a discussion of the implications of the rate of that energy delivery, uh, see the uh, web link at the bottom. Thank you very much.